Okay, to make a big bowl, you gotta start off with, well, a great big piece of clay. This is about 10 pounds. I like to rock it around like that to make sure I haven't trapped any air in the bottom. And then I'm just gonna center it. Get rid of that schmutz. Okay, I'm gonna cone it up a little bit and then push it down and then turn it into a bowl. I'm gonna make a shallow bowl, so I'm gonna give it a, a wide base. So I talked about bowls in a link below. I made some tall ones and some shallow ones. When you're done watching this, you can check them out. I like to open, I take out a little bit of that middle piece. I said before, I was accused of cheating, but since it's my studio, it's my way. It does make it easier to center you get rid of some of that stuff. And notice that I'm really connected. My elbows are into my ribs. I'm hanging on to my left arm. And I'm just going to pull my middle finger to the palm of my left hand. When you're opening a piece this big, the clay has its own speed it likes to go. So just, you can feel it and just go the speed you want it to go. I'm not going full tilt on the wheel. I'm always keeping it moist and slidey, and both hands are gonna push up. And I have my big sponge. Now I'm going way down to the bottom. I'm pulling across. And now my left hand's still at the bottom, but my right hand is moving up. They're quite far apart at this point. And as I get closer to the top, my pressures decrease and they get closer together. So let's give it another pull. First of all, I want to go in and tidy up that bottom a bit. I got enough water down there to swim. Okay, I'm going to grab it again. I'm going to do another pull. Keeping that bottom in check. And give it another pull. Notice how as soon as I can join my hands together, they buddy up. Now I've left quite a bit of thickness up here. So I'm gonna open this up to a big bowl. And if it start out thin, by the time you stretch it open, it'll be too thin. So this is my rib. If you want information on measurements on how to make this rib, there's a link to a short below. And I'm just gonna go in Again, I'm connected at a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna go down and open this. As I get near the bottom, I pull that toe toward me. And as it said, you gotta watch when you get down at the bottom that you don't take your walls past the base. I'm gonna go in there and tidy up the bottom. I like a nice join in the bowl where the wall joins the bottom it has to be a nice, perfect profile. That's why I call it the perfect profile rib. I'm gonna give this guy a pull, meaning I'm just gonna pull the clay up. It's a compacting pull. What happens when you're throwing a bowl with the rib, the particles as they are forced open, kind of splay open, and you pull it, it just kind of tucks them all back in together. And so, so I'm just, I gave it a pull, make sure now let's see how big we can make this bowl before it falls down. I have a short in the links below where I did one past the point and it fell over, but I'm, I'm not going to kill this one. But we are going to see just how far we can go. This is why you want to start off with a nice thick rim, because you've got room for, for expansion. Notice I'm hanging on tightly. That's pretty big. We can go more. I'm not going fast. Eh, let's do another one. Okay, I'm gonna tidy that, give that one a pull. Where's my little sponge? Can't see beyond the bowl. So I'm starting to get past the base and this clay is fairly soft. 
so I'm thinking I could be close to done. Let's tidy this. You can see the inside I don't like. I got a thing there, uh, air bubble, but I can fix that in post. I mean, literally fix it later. I'm going to tidy up this bottom. I've mentioned a few times in throwing bowls that I like to throw opposite and move that into that blend there. You can see how I get rid of that messy bottom. I do like a nice join from the bottom of the bowl to the wall. So I'm going to get all the messy bottoms and all of that spinning done. And then I can do my last thing with the rib when I don't have to spin it anymore. Right now it's got enough. It can, it can do one more. And I'm going to use it and I'm going to go down and tidy up that bottom a bit more with the rib. That's where the perfect profile rib comes in and it joins up. That's, I'll tidy that up. See where we are. But you can see with that rib, you could just keep going. So how big are we now? Well, we start to dance a little bit. I think I'm going to quit. Okay, so let's measure that guy. I happen to have a yardstick. Uh, this guy is 18 inches. He'll be 16 by the time he's done, probably. Anyway, so there we are, throwing a large open bowl with the rib. They're kind of fun. I'll cut that off. It'll be a day or three before I can trim that. Like I said, it's starting to get rhythm. Some of my favorite people have rhythm. I'll cut it off and he's done. So I've got it level. The needle touches all the way around that way and it's centered, it touches all the way around that way. I just center by making a scratch and pushing in to the scratch. It takes a second. Anyway, so I'm going to trim this. And I've centered here, not centered there. When I'm finished cutting, it will be centered. And it's just a matter of cutting it away. I like to always give it a foot to sit on. It gives it kind of a, a lift, a presence on the table. And then I'm going to trim that. And it's not perfectly centered. Very few of us are. I'm just going to undercut that a little bit. And I'm thumping for sound. I don't know if you can hear that. So this is, sounds different than this where it's thicker. The higher the pitch, the thinner the, the clay. I always said if you're tapping for sound, and your clay moves, <laughs> you're a little too thin. Okay, so I've got that undercut. I'm gonna put a foot in here. I've said before when I'm trimming, I like the bottom to look just as tidy as the top. I think a pot should be finished top and bottom, especially if you're making a bowl this big. You want it to have presence on the wheel. You want it, you want it just to look nice. Still got quite a bit of clay there. Anyway, so there's trimmed. I'm gonna sponge it though, because I don't like you, I don't like it when you can see where the trimming ends and the throwing starts. So I'm just gonna take a damp sponge around the whole thing. As I said, you want it to be tidy. This also not only hides where the trimming started and ended, but it also brings all those little particles to the surface and it seals your pipe. It just makes it look nicer and be more sealed. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on the board it was on. I'm going to wet the bottom side of this back. So I'm going to put it back on the wheel and I'm going to wet top side of this back. And I'm going to put on 
a little bit of paper. I like to put paper between the piece I just cleaned and the board. Sometimes it can stick to the board and then you have to cut it off and if you've got it all trimmed and tidy, that's not a good idea. So if you put a bit of paper on there, wet paper, the bowl will stick to the wet paper and the paper won't stick to the board and you'll never get it stuck. So now I have to turn this the other way over. We're just going to do another uh, and put it on the wheel. Like I said before, I like to keep my pins at 9 and 3 o'clock underneath there. There's a hole for 9 and 3 o'clock and just gently tap and it'll come off. Okay, well that's kind of like centered. It's not perfectly centered. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. And this bowl is not perfectly centered. Anyway, very few of us are perfect. I like it sort of close to center so I can sponge it up and make the edge tidy where it sat on the bat. So that's it. We're trimmed, we're tidy, and not we're not completely on center. Uh, if you like watching me make this bowl, wonky or not wonky, you can please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos by me, it's the best way to support me and my channel. Please subscribe. And if you have anything to say about me, my wonky bowls, or anything else, any comments in the comment section below, just let me know. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching.